And we're live. It's on you. No problem. Hey, circle your own. Here we go. Uh, hey, number one, what evidence was not used to design his continental drift theory? Sorry? D. D is actually uh, incorrect. Oh, no, I stand corrected. D is correct. Sorry. It was not used to design his continental drift theory. So, jigsaw puzzle. I mean, I don't know if you've ever looked at a globe when you were younger and you noticed South America, Africa, that totally fits in there. I, I did when I was a kid, too. The issue was, although he could posit the theory, he couldn't explain how the continents moved. So he gave continental drift theory saying, I think they did. I think they were once all part of it. But it wasn't until the 1950s when someone came along and said, ah, he was right because we can show a mechanism that explains how these huge things of rock actually move very, very slowly. Number two, which of the following best explains the concept of plate tectonics? Let's see. Pieces of continents float over the liquid mantle. Continents on the lithospheric, that's the top layer. Plates move by convection currents in the asthenosphere. Continents in the, well, you know what? I know C is wrong because C is the second layer. It's the second layer. Continents don't float on the second layer. Uh, now, I find that question really nitpicky because all of, aside from C, A and B and D are sort of right. B is the best. A, yeah, the continents float over the liquid mantle, sort of, but that's more specific. <laughs> that's why I'm not specifically counting this quiz. Got the quiz here? Where's your binder? Carrying on. Uh, which of the following seismic earthquake waves are measured by seismographs on the Earth's surface? All of them are. P, S, and L waves. Number four. What's the name given to a line of volcanoes that are not found near a plate boundary? So some volcanoes are found by plate boundaries, but there are some, like Hawaii, which aren't near a continental plate. What do we call those ones? Hot, those are hotspot volcanoes. That is where there is an actual weakness in the lithospheric plate, the crust, and their magma is bubbling up from down below, but it's not happening because two plates are colliding. There's just a hole. A hot spot. Which of the following geological features are associated with the collision of an oceanic plate with a continental plate? So when an oceanic collides with a continental, what happens is the oceanic is heavier, so it slides underneath you have that whole idea of slab pull. So you have several things going. You do get mountains forming. You do get volcanoes forming. You do get earthquakes forming, all of those. And we've got them all here right off the coast of BC. What type of plate boundary occurs where two oceanic plates collide? Key word here is collide. So there's three types of boundary. Boundaries. Boundaries that diverge, diverging. The opposite of diverge is converge or converging. And then there was the ones that slid side by side. If they're colliding, Jessica, that means they're moving towards each other. Is that diverging, converging, or transforming? Converging. In which layer do the convection currents that move continents occur? Well, I know it's not there or there. Yeah, yeah, because the crust is solid. You know what? The mantle. <coughs> uh, which type of seismic waves travel through the outer core? So I don't know if I've covered this specifically. I think you have to look this up in the textbook. These are the ones that go through almost anything. Yeah. The S waves travel through everything except liquid bugs them. The L waves travel along the surface. 
It would be nice if S ways traveled on the surface because you could use S for surface, but you can't, unfortunately. So L ways travel along the surface. I know L ways are last to get there. P primary, S secondary, L last is how I remember it in terms of which ways fast, which ones are faster. What's the name given to a diverging plate boundary under the ocean? We have one in the mid-Atlantic. A diverging boundary, we call them a ridge, the mid-Atlantic ridge. That's where, so there is mountains there because the lava, the magma is bubbling up and as it bubbles up, it hardens, it expands. And so it's slowly pushing the continents apart as more magma is bubbling up there. Where is a shield volcano most likely to occur? The ones in Hawaii are shield volcanoes. They erupt fairly constantly, but not explosively. It's a, it's a thinner magma that, well, it's a tourist attraction, really. We can, we can work with it. Hawaii is slowly getting big as the magma hits the oceans. It turns to rock. But you saw last day, we saw the video of the one in uh, Mount, I think it was Mount Etna in Italy, where the guy's house had slowly been covered by the volcano. He had his final meal when his house started to burn. And then he had to walk away because the government was gonna, wasn't going to save his house. A little matching. Uh, match the term. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Focus. That's the point inside the Earth where an earthquake actually begins. G. I'm going to skip 12 for a second. The difference between focus and epicenter, the epicenter, C, that's the point on the surface directly above because the earthquake begins, Emily, somewhere inside the Earth. We measure the epicenter above it on the surface. That's the difference between focus and epicenter. Uh, which one is the lithospheric plate? Oh, I did G. And I did see when I crossed those out. Uh, area where molten rock rises to, nope. Point on the Earth's surface, nope. Portion of rock material that includes, I think F, yeah? Is the lithospheric plate. I hope, let me double check my answer key. Yay, I'm right. Subduction zone. So that's the result of one plate diving beneath another plate. And you can remember that because the prefix sub, like subtract or submerge, means go under. Yep. Uh, which of these do you think is uh, mantle convection? E? Hey, we're right. Oh, I should have crossed out F already. Uh, spreading ridge. B, a point on the Earth's surface where two plates are forced apart. Uh, they didn't ask us for A, but what do we call an area where molten rock rises to the Earth's surface? The volcano. That one I think most of you kind of know. Short answers. It says explain why ocean rock increases in age the greater the distance away from an ocean spreading ridge. So if you wanted me to give you an answer, I would say young rock is forced up or bubbles up. But when it, it bubbles up, Hayden, when it is forced up, there's older rock above it. What's it going to do with that older rock? Push it out. And then more young rock pushes it. So the furthest away, so for in terms of the mid-Atlantic ridge, the oldest rock is right along the North American coast and right along the European coast. The youngest rock is in the mid-Atlantic ridge. So young rock is forced up, which pushes or forces older rock away from the ridge. Does that make sense? B, explain how magnetic stripes in an ocean rock provide evidence for plate tectonics. OK. So in the rocks, especially along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, they notice that when the rocks were liquid, 
the iron in the rocks pointed north, but north wasn't always north. For some reason, and we're still debating the reason, every few hundred thousand years, the north and south pole magnetically switch places. There's a big magnet inside of the earth, and every couple of hundred thousand years, it flips. So we can see that in these patterns of rock. So you could say something like this. Uh, well, I'll show you what my fancy schmancy answer key says. Let me zoom in a little bit. I don't know if you can read this. It says, magnetic orientation is recorded in rock. Earth's magnetic field has reversed many times in the past. The record of these magnetic reversals is recorded as a symmetrical stripe pattern on opposite sides of a spreading ridge, with younger rock closer to the ridge and older rock further away, which suggests that plates are moving apart at a spreading ridge. I'm not looking for an explanation that detailed, but I would look for a few highlights. If you mention that it shows that the magnetic field of the Earth has changed, and that older rock is further away, and we know that the magnetic field has changed in the past, Hey, how could these striped patterns appear? The only way they could appear is if the continents were moving apart. Uh, number 18, where is convection occurring? Now, on your test, I apologize because the pictures are going to be black and white even though on here they're in color. Sorry, I'll try and make them as clear as possible. Sorry, where is convection occurring? C. See? and give a brief description. I would say something like this. Hot magma rises, cools, and is replaced. And when it cools, Kenzie, it gets pushed out, and so you get these convection currents. Now, by the way, it's far more chaotic than this lovely little circular picture that they give you. Emily, they've really dumbed it down and tried to make it as simple as possible. The Earth is very, very complicated. In fact, if you look at the gray sheet that I gave you, it's showing the continents moving in nice directions. They're also twisting in things as well, so they may be moving apart and being a transform boundary at the same time. Um, in the textbook, it says, like, the it said C is a convection current, like just as a... Yeah, a convection current undergoes the process of convection. Yeah. In other words, convection current is the noun. The verb is convection is what's going on. What's convection? Hot rises, cold takes its place, and as cold takes its place, as hot cools off, it moves out and more heat comes in. It, it's the long, fancy way, Emily, of saying hot air rises, but replace the word air with hot liquids, even that really thick magma, also will rise because they're less dense. Uh, slab pole, where's that occurring? A. Remember, this is where I said, this is like if you're standing on the edge of a swimming pool, not only are you getting pushed behind, which is what's happening with B, but if you were reaching down to try and help somebody out of the pool, they're pulling you into the pool. This mass of, of continent, it's got a lot of mass, once it gets going and starts to sink, it's going to pull the rest of the continent with it. So not only is the continent, Hannah, being pushed, not only is the plate being pushed apart at that ridge in the middle there at location B, it's also being pulled down by a slab. What would be a good name to call something that was pulling down with a slab? Slab pull. Slab pull. sinks. Pulls plate with it. Then eventually, Amy, that slab is going to melt, and all of those minerals, all of those rock, they're going to get redistributed in the mantle. And eventually, they may even, because it's also taking some carbon and other things with it, some of that may bubble up. That was part of what we were watching in that uh, the one video there. Uh, ridge push, I guess B. What's going on here? So here is where. Magma is bubbling up, and as it hardens, it gets pushed out by the magma beneath, and that's slowly pushing stuff apart. So how, what's a short way? To, what do they want me to write? Sure. Rising magma hardens, pushes old 
rock outward. Does that make sense? Now, number 19, I wouldn't ask this as a written question. This will be a multiple choice. I'll be asking you for the differences between P waves and S waves and L waves. And it says, compare and contrast the following. So I'm trying to think of a better way to demo this. So number 19, we just did in class. Uh, compare and contrast the following. A composite volcano with a rift eruption. So composite, I'll put a letter C for composite. Oh, let's try that again, Mr. Duick. Come on, let me click here. Come on, computer. All right. Do that. Turn that off. Oh, the phone. Uh, erase, unerase. There we go. Composite. Uh, what can you tell me about composite eruptions? Yeah. Yep. More specific, because the rift ones do that too. So what's the difference between the two of them? I, I don't know why I'm putting it there. Let's do this, Mr. Duick. There we go. And I'll give you a hint. The composite volcano, that's the eruption that you guys have grown up with in your area that's the most famous. So which is the eruption in our general vicinity that you remember or you heard of when you were kids that's the most famous? What's the most famous eruption that's happened in the past 25 years in our area of the world here? Okay, Mount St. Helens. Okay, that is a composite. What type of eruption was it? Gentle, nice, a little bit of lava slowly flowing down, nobody got hurt, nice and easy? No, so composite, the difference between a composite, violent, violent, and explosive. Why? Turns out the magma is much thicker, and so because it doesn't flow as easy, pressure builds up, pressure builds up, pressure builds up, and as all of you know, when pressure builds up, you snap. Metaphorically, but also that's what happened. I showed you, you saw the video of Mount St. Helens. It's a time-lapse photo, but you see basically one-third of the whole mountain blew off. If you're bored sometime, do a Google search and read a few of the web pages about Mount St. Helens. The size of that eruption was massive. Huge. Compare that with a rift eruption. So a rift eruption is often under the water. It's, they're huge. They're very, very long volcanoes, often several hundreds of miles long even. But it is uh, mild, mildly explosive. In fact, really not very explosive at all. It's a mild eruption. Produces huge amounts of lava, but just because it just trickles and trickles and trickles and trickles and gushes and gushes and gushes. It doesn't explode. Where turns out the composite ones, Emily, don't actually produce that much magma. The big issue actually is usually it involves a bunch of rock landslide because the mountain blows up. Not always. Lots of ash as well. And I think you saw the video of Mount St. Helens. There is inside the crater another dome building. And over time, we've watched it with time-lapse photography get bigger and bigger. It's a ticking time bomb. So what was 19A? Uh, 19A, that's what I did with my demonstration right there. So the difference between the ground motion of a P wave and an S wave, P wave in the same direction as the crust. Uh, S wave, so back and forth, S wave side to side. P wave faster, S wave slower. P wave not as damaging, S wave more damaging. So this is just as one of the things then in the Japan earthquake. They, the P wave arrived in Japan, I think it was three minutes before the S wave. They were able to, via cell phones, get a brief warning out to people, but we still got to be able to do better. Okay? Any questions there at all? So there's some stuff you need to know.